Hey, this is Lula, and this is the series where we look at the most expensive house for sale in each state. We are in Oklahoma, the uh, okayest state, I guess. Eh, eh? No, I'm sorry about that. Um, I, I don't really know much, except it's got that panhandle. It's kind of attached to Texas. I assume it's just kind of a, a, a Texas junior or something. I don't know. Who knows? Anyway... I skipped past a couple of houses that were mostly land, and that brought us to this uh, rather rather stately manor in Tulsa, which is uh, eight million five hundred thousand. So not not the biggest sticker price we've seen, not the smallest. I don't know what an Oklahoma dollar is. I, I think there's oil there. Do they have oil money? I would expect them to be spending more on houses. Um, we got seven beds, ten baths. And so it's it's fairly sizable. I did actually, when I saw the uh, the first glance at this house, I went and looked up what the style is with with the brown framing on the white. It's called a the black and white revival. It was part of the Tudor revival, so it's it's very English. It's hearkening back to you know more problematic times. Uh, I think it's interesting that they've just kind of tacked a couple of these onto an otherwise just brick building i don't i don't know if that's a is that part of the style is it a mishmash of styles i don't know go watch an architecture uh channel if you want actual information we are here to talk shit let's let's get to it got a nice big patio area it looks like what is that is that a fire pit is it a fountain i'm not entirely clear on what that is. Uh, we got lots of sitting areas. You could host, I don't know, like a wedding or something here. We got a little pond. Yep, here's the pond. It's got geese in it. Good f good for the pond. Good for the geese, I guess. And here's, the, it's a very nice brick walkway up here. I, I'm not a huge fan of having this many stairs in order to get up to the house. I'm assuming the garage entrance is probably a little more accessible. This to me, feels just like an illusion of a grand entrance at the expense of convenience. Here's the door. We got some really nice wood carvings around it. It looks like this is um, either in an older door or, or styled after an older style. And we got an old lantern hanging over it. And our front entryway, we can see this house is going to be extra. It's going to be a lot. Uh, we've got some really intricate wood carving details here. This big ass mirror that is just so much. I'm not necessarily against it, but it is a, an awful lot. Um, I guess if coming down the stairs facing it, you're never going to walk out of the house looking like shit because you've got a full view. And then we got these big grand archways. You can see up here... Like, the, the crown molding has little details around. We do have a can light. We do have a fucking can light. God damn it. Um, but we've got lots of little little ornamentation details. So this is not going to be mcmansion -y, nor would we expect it to be. This house was built in 1928. This is actually a historical house. Uh, I don't know. Was Oklahoma state in, in 1928? I don't know anything about Oklahoma. Probably. I think most of them were states by then. Uh, we are embracing some art here. That's probably some tax evasion art. All of the doors are beautiful. This banister, I, I mean, gorgeous. It looks like they've really tried to preserve a lot of the original details. We've got old wood floors here. This hallway, this, this arched hallway through here with the wood paneling curving over the ceiling. God, those are just beautiful details. And we're in a white room. All right, we are we are not immune to the curse of, of rich people painting everything white. I will say, though, they've got a big, very colorful painting here. So we're at least bringing some stuff in there. We've got a lot of art. Like, that's that's a good centerpiece there. I would be nervous about having it in the middle of a table. It looks very delicate. But if that's the lifestyle you are living, good for you. Other than that, we got a lot of white paintings on white walls. I don't know what this little thing is. Got another sitting room here. This might be in the same room. We might have our back to that area we were just looking at. Big ass horse picture. We got some horse girl behavior going on here. Um, Oklahoma, I think we can expect the horse girl behavior. Uh, symmetrical furniture here. We got two of this chair, two of that chair. The rich don't know how to buy just one of a piece of furniture. 
I, I kind of like, because this is, it's a little claustrophobic. They've really crammed a lot of chairs in a not very large space here. And so the implication to me, since this is a very closed circle of seating, is that the reason there's no back on this couch is because you have to vault it in order to get into the seating area. The fireplace is beautiful. I think it would be more beautiful if they didn't have white crown molding in this room, if they'd gone with a, a crown molding that actually matched the wood of the fireplace and the floorboard. Um, having the white wall and the white crown molding and the white ceiling, it just turns the entire ceiling into an abyss of can lights. That's so many can lights. I mean, you know, this this is probably a fully wood ceiling. If this was built in 28, so they've they've drilled into probably a like a plywood ceiling or something like that. That's awful. All right, we've got this looks like a, a patio or a three seasons room, but we do we've got a brick floor, so I would classify it more as a patio. We've got lots of plants, so we love our greenery. I think that's a, a peace lily. It looks a little sad, but I I have one, and they can be dramatic. Other than that, I mean, this the space is a little disorganized, but I get the sense that that's because it's it's well used. This is a very active gardening space. Back inside, we are adjacent to the giant horse room. Look at those glass details. Holy cow, those those are so unique. I don't think I've even seen that type of stained glass before. I love that. And and the window seat, that's nice. I don't know what that is. Um, I like having the ottoman with the storage tucked underneath. I don't like the velvet chairs. I don't like that there's two of them. I don't like that they're velvet. I don't like that this cushion doesn't match them. Um, while we're in a, a cranky mood, can I also complain that the ceiling is wallpapered to match the walls? I didn't notice at first the wood trim it's a nice wood carving. The wood trim almost distracted me from it, but not quite. This, this has to be like a servant's quarters or something. This looks like it's in an attic. This is kind of a shitty little kitchenette area. Um, this furniture doesn't look very nice. This is like where the nanny lives or something. In which case, like, sure, I get to, it's a small space. You could dress it up a little for her. You could dress it up. And this is also in an attic. We got a little... Yeah, it's just kind of, just kind of a shitty bathroom. Oh, we got a nursery here. And it looks like this is either kids sharing a room or we've got a bed here for whoever's watching over the baby to sleep in. I like the haystacks. That's a nice little picture. It looks like it was done by someone who's not a professional artist. And I love those kind of touches in a home. I don't like that this room is white. I absolutely, a baby's room. Oh my God, give them some visual stimulation. They can't live on haystacks alone. Now, this is a narrow, so a lot of this house is attic, I guess, or I guess that the attic is just well utilized in the house, but what a weird narrow little corridor room. I love the floor. That floor is incredible. Um, nice little TV watching space, dedicated TV watching space. I like the doors that are specially fitted into the space. Uh, you've got gables cut into the roof that bring some natural light in there. It's a good use of the space. It's an awkward space, but it's well used. Yeah, look, we got a little reading nook over here. The ceilings are probably very low, I'm guessing. Yep, we could see that this is being used as, as a kid's area. I'm guessing they, they probably splattered all of these walls in white when they put it on the market, which is unfortunate because it makes this space look so boring. And you've got some interesting roof lines and some interesting shapes, and you could do cool things with the color in here, and it would probably be a much more visually engaging space. Here's an attic bedroom. I wonder if the whole upstairs of the house is like that. That might be a little claustrophobic for my taste. Yeah, that's, God forbid you hit your head on that in the shower. If there's, if there's not another living space that's less awkward than this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this like, no, I, I would not pay eight million dollars to live in this awkwardly shaped little space. Okay, this, 
All right, there is a normal living space. I'm feeling better now. There's just a lot of attic space. It's just, it's landlord white. It's not even like an off-white or, or some other neutral shade that's vaguely boring. It is landlord white. All right, we've got a, a shallow, but looks like a nice long and very thick porcelain bathtub there. Uh, you could tell it's an old house because this is, it's a small bathroom. This is all crammed together and there was really no other way to do it. But you do have some cool things like, like this little soap holder that's built into the wall. Uh, this storage that's built into the wall. People don't really do that in houses anymore and they are such nice details. All right, this is an interesting space. This looks like maybe a sitting room that adjoins to a bedroom. Um, I approve of bringing the TV, if that's the case, of bringing the TV out of the bedroom and having it in, in a separate room so you're not destroying your sleep hygiene. This couch is a cool shape. That's not typical. This is a cool shit. You know, they're, they're picking out interesting features here. I might actually like this house. Whoa. Um, but of course, you know, the color scheme they've gone with is gray. So it's definitely pottery barn vibes here. Just like one, one little bit of color might, might save the space. I don't know. And less cam lights. Got, you know, you know, someone went through in like 2002 and just drilled those into every ceiling in the house. It is, ugh. And it's, it's so unnecessary. Look how many windows in here. You get plenty of natural light. You've got a light fixture in the ceiling. You've got wall sconces. You've got a fireplace. During the day, you're gonna get plenty of light and you don't need all of these cam lights to light it up. During the night, you shouldn't have the room that bright anyway. That's terrible for you. I do like that couch though. Look at that, that's an awesome cut. And we've got the laundry room tucked in here. That's interesting. I I think I like that. It's convenient to the bedrooms, which I mean, if you think about it, that's where the clothes are coming on and off anyway. It's a nice place to have the laundry room. Got a bathroom, that looks like marble tiling, maybe. I would really like that if this wall wasn't fucking white. God, you can barely tell that this is like a really nice marble tile because it looks like just another white wall. If this was any other color, this marble would be three times as gorgeous. Holy cow, that is a lot of closet. We got a vanity here. They've been to closets and more. They used that coupon that came in the mail for a closet organizer. We got more horse girl behavior. This might be the headquarters of the horse girl. This might be her room. Got at least gone for a vague gray color instead of landlord white in here. I see a yellow chair. That's colorful at least. And we got a little desk in here. Um, I like that it's facing out the window. The pillar candles. I've seen these in other houses. What the shit is that? What are those for? You're gonna you're gonna dedicate an entire pillar's worth of floor space to a candle? Oh. They really tried to cram the full mansion, like modern one percenter bathroom into the smallest 1920s bathroom space. Holy crap. I mean, this, this freestanding bathtub barely fits there. They're supposed to be, you know, in, in the traditional mansion, there's like three feet of space on either side of it to show just how huge and luxurious your bathroom is around the freestanding bathtub. Uh, but no, they've just crammed it in this teeny tiny little toilet because there was really no other way to get the toilet in there and have space to walk past to the bathtub. Incredible. Yeah, I mean, they did with the space what they could. Got a little balcony here. That's nice and cozy. These chairs barely fit though. And what is this wall surface? Is this stucco? Is part of the house stucco? Here's those yellow chairs. Of course there's two of them because rich people don't know how to buy just one of a piece of furniture. So we've got two of them. I will say we haven't seen any good bed frames in this house. 
Like this headboard is probably the first noticeable bed type furniture I've noticed. And even that, it's, I mean, it's not really anything to write home about. Hold on, let me scan back here. Yeah, look at this. This is just on a box spring, I think. It's, it, I, I guess that's, I think the box spring is sunk in whatever that is. But it's, yeah, just like a weird quilted frame or something. It's, it's barely noticeable. And it might be because it's white in a sea of white, but I also think it's just not, not that nice. This one, this one looks very Pottery Barn. I mean, it's, it's gray. It looks like it's maybe suede. It, it doesn't look, it doesn't match the caliber of the details that we see elsewhere in the house. And now that I'm noticing it, a lot of the historical details and, and historical accents that I was complimenting downstairs, they're not really here. All right, we're back in here. We're done with our detour. It's gray. It's a bedroom. It's got a reading nook. What's that bowl for? Is that the puke bowl? I don't know. Oh, and we're back in this room anyway. It's like they knew we would want to go back and look. All right, we've got another room. That at least looks like historical furniture there, even though it doesn't match the dresser next to it or the bed frame in front of it. I feel like if you get a really nice piece, like a, a piece of furniture that's almost a work of art, I feel like you, you take that and you design the room around it. You don't match everything to it, but you're like, all right, this is the vibe for this room. And then you go and you, you work with that. And, and they haven't, they just stuck it in there. And we've got another velvet chair and more white walls, of course. We got a second nursery? How many babies do these people have? Or do they just have a second nursery that's like in a different part of the house so they can always have the baby close at hand? I guess that might be convenient. It seems a little much though. And again, the room is blindingly white. That's not, that's not good for a child's psyche. Right, we're upstairs. We've got this beautiful banister. More horses on the walls. Jesus Christ, we've seen worse horse girl behavior. That doesn't mean this isn't horse girl behavior. Yeah, look at this. We got this beautiful hanging light fixture framed by these ugly ass can lights. It's so unnecessary. We've got we've got some built indoor architecture in in the you know the curves over this door, this archway here, but compared to how detailed and ornate the downstairs is, you, you come up here and I don't know if it's that they've just painted over all of the woodwork so you can't really see it, but it looks a little bland in comparison. All right, we're back downstairs. We're in a dining room. We've made a really good use of the, the wainscoting and the chair rail. We're using that to balance out a really bold color on the walls that's not an overwhelming color because we've got a nice neutral and white on the bottom here. The ceiling looks like it's supposed to be beautiful, but A, obviously they've drilled can lights into this beautiful ornate ceiling, um, and B, they painted it all white, so you can't actually see what's going on here. That makes me so sad. This was probably uh, just absolutely gorgeous. And I get, I get that a dark wood ceiling, which is probably what was up here, wouldn't match this room necessarily. But you could change the stain on the wood without ruining it the way that paint ruins it. Um, you, I mean, you could just match it to the floor. It's not like the floor doesn't match the rest of the room. This is very interesting. They've, um, this is the second like glass art piece I've seen in here. So obviously they've got some sort of affinity for that. Again, they've ruined the ceiling. Um, but this, I mean, the bar looks nice. I love that that's the centerpiece there. Um, it's a little strange though, because this is supposed to be like where the shelves of liquor go and they've put this here instead. And so we don't know where the liquor is. I assume there's none because we're in Oklahoma and it's probably, I don't know, a dry county or something. Yep, we've got more glasswork up here, a little sitting nook. That's a, that's a miniature fireplace, I think. Oh, and it's got like the Art Deco 
framing around it. That's such a cool little detail. I wish it wasn't painted. Um, it, I thought this was like a corn. I think it might be a corner cabinet. I'm very, but that's that's definitely a fireplace. We're in the kitchen, which is past that archway that we were complimenting before. We've got more of this excellent stained glass. We've got more ruined ceilings. They drilled can lights directly into those decals. That's so sad. I, ugh, I am mourning this ceiling. And the, the dark wood cabinetry is, is nice, but it's a little jarring because of the white ceiling, because the ceiling clearly looks like it is not meant to be white. So there's a lot of houses from around this era in the area that I live. Obviously, usually not this large, but you see a lot of houses where you go into the kitchen and you're like, oh, they didn't know about kitchens when they built this house. This is chaos. They had to put the refrigerator in another room. The oven looks like it doesn't know what it's doing there. So I'm guessing that's what happened here is is that the, it's just a small kitchen space. They didn't know kitchens were going to be so big when they built this house. So that's why we've got the ovens and the microwave tucked away in this weird corner over here. And it's a very narrow little aisle. It's It's almost a galley kitchen, which is not what you expect to see in a house this expensive the floor is gorgeous we i see the refrigerator over there it doesn't look like it's disguised to me uh it probably doesn't need to be because it's it's over in its cubby yep that is just a bold big bold stainless steel refrigerator more stained glass over the sink i am just gaga for that that glass work so this is actually so this is actually an island. I had to go back because I couldn't see it. I thought this backed up to those cabinets, but it is actually an island, which makes it an odd choice because it makes the room look very cramped, but it's actually not. There's there's two aisles around it, but they're both very narrow. And you've got these, these stools crammed in here. I like the marble. I really like this marble on the island. Um, the layout, it's like they tried to, to crush the modern expectations for for a wealthy person's kitchen into a space that was just a little bit too small for that. And if they had just played to the actual space they had and and designed something unique for it, it would it would look nicer. Got another bathroom here. I like that wallpaper. I think it it works well with the glasswork in the window. And holy crap, here is one hell of a gate. What is this? Is this an office? Is it a man cave? There's a saddle with a cowboy boot painted on. <laughs> uh, that's wild. Um, 10,000 can lights. This room is blindingly bright. Uh, of course, we have to address the row of shotguns on the wall. That's um, that's making a statement there, but we are in Oklahoma, so I guess, I, I don't know what this is, like, what are you locking up here? The, the guns are on the wall. What did you feel the need to block off? And then this, uh, obviously we are not Tito Tallers here. We do have, uh, some hidden booze, but maybe you're not allowed to display your booze. You have to hide it in the table. And this is, what is this? This, oh, oh, those are cigars. Is this like a closet for smoking cigar? I think that that's got to be like a fan or a vent, like a vent so that you could stand here and smoke your cigars without stinking up the house. That's, that's a pretty wild, aggressively butch thing to go with that room full of uh, butch details, I guess. Oh, oh, here's, here's another sitting room. Uh, this one's got like a sitting area by the fireplace plus a TV area. So we've got a little bit uh, too much floor space going on. But also I feel like it's it's divided up somewhat logically. It's not like two sitting areas right next to each other that are just sitting areas. I love this tile on the fireplace. That's so freaking cool. I really like the colors in here. They've got an accent wall that actually contributes to the uh, the vibe of the room. The other walls, other than the accent wall, are not white. 
So we're not dealing with like a, a monochrome of like white and one color. And then you've got lots of like pops where you bring it in. Like the, the rugs are great. These chairs are fun. I, I still don't know why everything has to be velvet, but you know what? I'm going to forgive it because this is fun. This is a fun space. I like that. Oh, wow. Now I can see why they didn't have to uh, hang up all of that liquor on the back of that other bar. How many bars are in this house? I feel like there was a mini bar in in the room with the, the secret booze table. There's the one with the glass sculpture. Th these hanging lights are really cool. They have good taste in glass in this house. And now there's this, which is, I mean, it's clearly climate controlled wine storage for one thing. So they are they are doing that very carefully. They know their wine. Uh, and then we've got all of the other liquor here. And I like this better than a traditional bar that you would have in a house, which is set up like a bar you would have at a bar. Um, because, you know, the long bar in a public place you're not actually wanting to sit down and talk to every other person at that bar. A lot of times you're sitting there and you kind of want to keep to yourself or you want to talk to one person next to you. In your home, that's not what you really want to do. In your home, you're, I, you know, in theory, you're sitting with people that you've invited into your home or that you live with. So you want to be able to sit around in a circle and actually hold a conversation with one another. This is a cool space. I approve of this one. This, all right, I, I will say the colors, colors are still good. We're, we're creeping toward the monotone uh, a bit here, but I think this, this light fixture saves it. Um, the light fixture is, it, it's a little low, and I, th I think what's actually tripping me up about it is that it's over this hotel furniture. The, the chairs that are all facing in different directions that is just hotel furniture. It's designed so people who are strangers don't have to look at each other while they sit around waiting. And I don't know why that belongs in a house. If we've got a billiards table. If your mansion doesn't have a billiards table, are you really rich? So we've, we've ticked off that box. I think I see shuffleboard back there too. Still don't know what the shit shuffleboard is. And I can see, oh, we are by that bar because this is the wine fridge right there. Here's the other direction on this room. Oh, oh, this is attached to that room that I really liked. So that was not attached to that other sitting area. Um, yeah, I, I feel like this chair is just weird. It doesn't really belong here. Either you're, first of all, you've, you've got two sitting areas over there that are perfectly serviceable where you can actually sit and talk to other people you've got all of these stools around the pool table so if you're playing pool that's where you're sitting if you're at the bar you're sitting at the bar i i don't know what situ in what situation you end up sitting here it looks like a couch designed to create wallflowers at a party and this light fixture only works directly over that. So that makes it seem like a very permanent fixture because otherwise this light fixture is hanging in the middle of the walking space in the room. Oh, we have an industrial kitchen in addition to the main kitchen so that uh, when you hire caterers uh, to cater your event, they've got a, a kitchen grade area. So obviously we are hosting some big parties here. It looks like we've got all the necessities going on. I do see a window through here. So I'm wondering what's on the other side of this. I think the last time we saw an industrial kitchen, it was like directly behind the normal kitchen. And so I was thinking like you could pretend that you're cooking and have caterers like pass you food so that your guests think that you're making everything. We are back outside. Uh, we've got some nice landscaping. I'm assuming Oklahoma is pretty dry since it's sandwiched between Texas and Kansas, which are both very dry. And it looks like the, the greenery we've chosen is pretty reflective of that. I'm not seeing huge swaths of grass from this angle. Overall, I, I liked this house. I think it's because it's historical. It was made back when they actually made things in a quality way. They've definitely ruined the ceilings in here. I mean, the ceilings are horrendous. And actually, 
I suspect they probably, if you look at these vents here, they had to run uh, HVAC through this house because it was not built with HVAC. There were probably nicer ceilings in every room and they had to lower them to run the HVAC through the ceiling. They either had to lower them or they had to, to tear them out so they could run the HVAC through the, the space between the, the floor for the second floor and the ceiling here. Um, and so they probably ruined the original ceilings doing that, which is a shame, but also do you want to live in a house without AC in Oklahoma? I'm sure that would be a miserable way to live. There's there's not a, a great way around that. They didn't have to do the can lights, though. They could really have done without that. There are enough lights in this place. Otherwise, there are enough windows. It does have some unique and really fun spaces. This room is using color well. Oh, there's elephant lamps. I love that. I'm, I'm an elephant person. I, I'm, I like a good elephant. Overall, um, I mean, this, this area I think is probably the most extra and, and the wood is, is way overdone and uh, the can lights ruin it. Um, but there, there were no rooms where I was like, this is a hundred percent atrocious. Um, at the most, it was, they painted everything white, probably because they're selling the house. I think, I think the details in this house really exemplify why the McMansions of today are so gaudy. Because people will spend millions of dollars uh, to build these houses and they will they're they're spending all of that money on square footage they're spending all of it on on the bedroom bathroom count on the bowling alley uh, on these spaces they probably don't even use anymore and they're not putting in any little unique features and architectural details they're they're not spending anything on on ceiling details and and carvings and all of these little touches that tell you there was actual craftsmanship and and artistry involved in creating this house uh, i mean at the end of the day a lot of the mcmansions they look like just a bunch of little blank rectangles glued together and that's clearly not what's going on here I mean, the, the built-in cabinet here I'm just noticing for the first time, I love that. It makes sure that your china cabinet in here is, is always going to match the architecture of the rest of the room because it's part of the room. So, yeah, the, I mean, the second floor, I think, was probably the, the biggest miss here, and, and mostly because it was boring and white and just not as detailed as the rest of the space. But uh, overall, this one was a win for me. I'm, I'm going to say it. I don't, I don't give a lot of these a pass, but I'm giving this one a pass. Well, that's Oklahoma. I am pleasantly surprised. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, if you have any thoughts, if you saw anything you think I missed, feel free to leave a comment. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and have a good one.